Hello, everyone. This is Eric from Etiquette. And it, hello to and welcome to another Sunday live stream. I think I made a bit of a mistake before. I set the time for this live stream 10 minutes later than it's usually at. That's my mistake, but I hope you guys can join soon. And here we already have Bonnie Esther. Bonnie Esther, hi. Good morning from Marlboro, Massachusetts, United States. Hi, Eric. Hi, Bonnie Esther. How are you doing today? Uh, it's a little bit darker inside here because I'm using my lights to shoot some videos. But uh, unfortunately, something really sad happened. So I I got dressed. I put on my my um, I put on my um, my jacket. Uh, I made my hair, and then I shot the videos. But with the videos, I forgot to add the mic. So now I've got to shoot all those videos over. It's so disappointing. Uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, I wanted to share that. Letty, hi Letty, how are you doing? Actually, I think Letty, um, I think uh, almost three weeks ago or a month ago, it was your it was your birthday, and I didn't know, and I wanted to say happy birthday. Um, sorry, I missed it for three weeks ago. I, I saw you. Uh, someone posted it on the chat box group, and I was like, oh, I should have um, wished Letty happy birthday. So a little bit late, three or four weeks, I think, but happy birthday, Letty. Uh, Priya, hi Priya. Bonnie Esther, yuck. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, it's 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 so disappointing, but it happens, you know. I I wrote four scripts and I shot two videos. I shot the first video was summer activities, ten summer activities, and the other one was all about um, how English learners can use TV shows to to learn English. And I shot them, and I thought, okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to do my live stream and then shoot the rest. So. Fortunately, it's just those two, but I've got to do everything over again. Okay, uh, Abila Shah, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, except I'm complaining about uh, messing up a little bit. Chegu, hi, Abila Shah, good evening, hi, and um, Cam, hi, Cam. Che Chegu from Malaysia, hi, Chegu. Uh, um, Apakabar, Th that is how they say it in Indonesia and also Malaysia, Apakabar. Um, hi, Q King. Hi, greetings. Hope you are well. I am doing really well. Actually, yesterday I went hiking. I had a great time. And my plan was today to spend today to finish off some work and to shoot the videos that I need for the next month. And I did everything and I waited a bit long. I took a shower, made myself pretty, and I shot the videos. And unfortunately, it's unusable. And after this, I need to go and shoot them again. Letty says, thanks. Uh, Luza, hi Luza. Ank, hi. I, I think I'm saying it wrong. Ank, Ank. Hi Ank. Uh, Mrs. Abiela, hi Mrs. Abiela. Nice to see you. Um, you will have to put it behind you. Which one, Letty? Missing your birthday or these videos? I, I bet you, I, I know you mean the videos. I have to put it behind me. I'm just going to need some time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Fatih, hi from Turkey. Uh, Merhaba, hi Fatih. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm very excited because one of my Turkish friends will come and visit me next week. So I'm looking forward to that. AJ, hi AJ, good to see you. And my dad says, hi everyone and welcome to the new teachers. Yes, hi everyone. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Um, M English. Hi, I'm a teacher from Vietnam. My, na my name is me. I watched a lot of your videos. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching um, uh, me. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I look back at my videos and I think I've made some videos that are useful, but I always keep on looking towards the future at videos I haven't made. And it's it's really I've got all these videos I'm I'm still planning on making, and I feel like I'm disappointing everyone by not bringing them out quickly enough. So I really need to work hard and get all these videos done and do um, the write the scripts to get them done. So hopefully in time I can put out all these videos I really want to help teachers with. Uh, Dushdao, hi from Thailand. Hi, it's uh, nice to have you. Um, do. Uh, I wish it last year. Oh, I wish I could go to Thailand for vacation, but I think I'm just going to be in Korea. 
unfortunately. Yes, upper kabad. I'm well. Good to hear, Chegu. Ping, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Hello, Eric. Finally, summer vacation has started already. I already st started summer class, but still online. Any tips for summer? That would be exciting. Ping. Actually, I shot a video, the 10 summer, 10 summer activities. It's just some games and things to use for summer activities. I think the main thing is just to um, keep it fun. If possible, you can take the students outside to do some activities. Otherwise, um, remember, they're going to have a lot of energy. So when you start your class, you should have some activities to get them moving and, you know, to let go of that excess energy. So make class fun, especially these summer activities and you should be okay. So I, um, I'll reshoot the videos tonight. And I think, well, this Tuesday, I want to release the Friends episode. It's all about how English learners can use Friends. And the reason I need to put it out this week is because the Friends reunion show is starts on Wednesday or Thursday. So I want to get that video out this week. And then next week, I'm planning on putting out the summer activities video. I hope you enjoy it. Marinette, hi, Dodd. Hi, Marinette. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Marinette is a South African name. I can see it there. And I like the fox there. Takang, hi. I would like to, uh, could you send me a link on some interesting topics and games for grade one to grade four English? Um, okay, topics and games. Okay, I've actually... Uh, one of the videos I would really like to use is how to, t one of the videos I was planning on talking about or planning on making maybe in the next month is how to teach young learners. And in there, I want to share some more games. But uh, if I quickly look at my channel, I can quickly look for some some games for younger learners. I actually, I did a very long video on how to teach young learners. Um, I'll put that out in a bit, but games that you can use. Uh, okay, I'll look forward in a bit, uh, Takang. Um, but most of the games, you really want the students to be active. You want to do lots of flashcard games. You want to do some board races that you can do. Uh, you can also use a lot of TPR. Currently, I'm working on a... I feel like I'm constantly just saying this, but I'm working on a video, especially for TPR. Um, you know, so... So total physical response where you get the students to act out some of the words. You really want to do a lot of that. That'll also probably come out in a month. I'll look for some games uh, now in a second. Lee, uh, get John. Hi, hello from Cambodia. Hello. Uh, Lay or Lee? Gabriela, hola, soy de Peru, mucho gusto. Okay, Gabriela, it's nice to have you from Peru. I think we've got quite a few viewers from Peru. Guys, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Um, Takang, I'll quickly look. Um, I think I always share this, but it's because I really like this. It's, um, I have, let's go to my channel. I'm just going to share this with you. I think this is basically all the ESL activities and you'll find some good ones in there. I also have some shorts. So let me quickly go here and I'm going to share this playlist with you. And the playlist has a lot of ideas, especially some icebreakers and some, some speaking games, although the speaking games might be for older students. Ashwani, hi. Good evening. Good evening to you too, Ashwani. Mrs. Uh, uh, hi, Eric's father. <laughs> uh, Ashwani, I'm from India. Uh, good morning from Brazil. Luciana, nice. Hi, Luciana. Good to have you back. Monle, good evening from Myanmar. Uh, Uriello, uh, hi. I'm from Manzanilo, Mexico. Oh, Mexico is definitely on the list I want to go to. So many great viewers from Mexico. Uh, Aurelio, 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 got it, there we go, Sagittarius, good to see you back, uh, hope you're doing well, Takara, I'm from Algeria, hi Takara, nice to have you with us, hello from Peru, nice to see you, it's a pleasure having you guys, uh, if I'm, if I'm a little bit, if I look a little bit annoyed, it's totally not about you, it's because I messed up and I wasted a lot of time shooting videos and then I didn't add the mic. So I have to redo those videos. So I'm a little bit annoyed, not at anyone out there. 
just with this guy right here. Uh, Sonia, hi teacher, hi Sonia. And guys, if you have any, if you have any names, it'll help. You call my name so cute. Is it Lee or Lai? I, I hope I hope I said it right, Lee. Uh, and Takara, so how can we assess our students? Okay, so when you assess your students, you're going to basically look at all the different skills you can assess them for. Um, right, so you're going to check their understanding, their speaking, their listening. Uh, you're also going to see what level they are when it comes to um, you know, or what, what grammar they use. Uh, you're going to want to assess them in many different ways. Uh, their understanding, their comprehension. What are some other ones? Yeah, so you just want to see what level they are. So they're, they're understanding how they can listen to you. And also when you ask questions, you start at, at a very base level and then ask them increasingly more difficult questions to understand how well they can answer you. So they're speaking. And you also ask them, uh, you can ask dif uh, different um tenses to see how, um, and ask them some questions about their grammar, which you also have to check. Um, I think, yeah, when it comes to, to assessing students, um, it, it takes some experience to understand where they are, but there are some tools online. There are some tests that you can do online. There are some tests that you can print out that students can write. If you just want to check their writing and their, their comprehension, um, but if you want to understand they're listening and speaking, you're going to have to do it with them. Um, I wish I could give a better answer, but that's that's basically what I can think of right now, uh, Takara. Uh, Dujo, uh, Dujdao, Dujdao, what's your technique for teaching teenagers? Very simple. I love teaching teenagers. Um, I often ask their opinions. I put them into, so whatever topic I'm teaching them, um, I share my experience with them and then I would ask them some questions from their experience because as teenagers, they've already built up some experiences uh, and they very fo they start focusing on the things that they like and they enjoy. So you can start asking them if you do a topic with them to share their experience with a partner, let them ask their, their partner some experience and then share back with the group. So uh, that share, uh, pair, share, share, pair, Wait, what is it? Think, pair, share. You can use think, pair, share with your students, which basically means you start the topic or whatever you want to teach them. The students um, think, pair, share. They think about it, then they share it with a partner, and then they share it with the group. I think that generally works with uh, teenagers and with all the students because they've got such um, such an interesting life. Um, and then at the end, play a fun game with them. A lot of people think that games should only be for younger learners, but even with um, your teenagers, you want them to share and have a fun time at the end of it. Leah, okay, um, there we go, Leah. Okay, Leah, I understand. You can call me Leah, I like your voice, sir. Could you tell me how I can learn vocabulary effectively? Okay, vocabulary, there are uh, there are lots of resources online where you can get vocabulary lists. What I would do, however, is find something that you're passionate about. If it's watching a TV show, if it's reading a book, if it's watching a podcast, is listen to it and start writing down some vo new vocabulary that you learn and look up the definitions. Uh, if you want, if there are certain topics that you are interested in, learn more about the topics. And also, if you want to find a different way to express yourself, maybe if you write, if, if you like writing, for example, write a diary. And then instead of using certain words, try and look up synonyms. So words that are, um, are that have the same meaning, meaning as that word, and then start at, uh, swapping those words with their synonyms and start using that in your everyday language. And so I think what's very important with language learning is that not only when you learn, but also when you use the language, you will improve. Adele, hi, how are you doing? Nice to have you with us. Hope you had a lovely weekend. It was beautiful weather yesterday and today was also nice. But today I didn't leave my apartment once. I, I stayed at home, I cooked lunch and I did some, some work for university and I wrote the scripts and I shot the videos and now I'm here. So hopefully tomorrow I will get some more exercise and get everything done. Hi, by the way, guys, how are you doing? Did you have a good weekend? Um, I'm, uh, I'm so happy to be here with you and to share some ideas. If you have any questions, 
please put it in the comments. Okay, uh, let's see, where were we? Uh, hiya, hiya, uh, Alba Berry. Hi, Eric. I'm so happy to attend this live with you. I'm an English teacher and I live in Egypt. Very nice to have you, Haya. It's a pleasure to have you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Natalia. Hi, Eric. Nice to see you. I like your, I like friends. So look forward to your video. I love friends. I think it's such a great tool to use. So uh, I think it'll be fun. It's basically just talking about why Friends is such a good show to use. And then I also give some tips on how to use Friends to learn English. Um, I'm making the video because this week they're bringing out a Friends reunion show, which should be a lot of fun. But it is sad, you know, Friends happened 20 years ago. And to see all those characters, you know, that we love, those actors have aged. So, you know, it's kind of weird seeing them now compared to what they looked like when they were younger. And also, I think they're making a spin-off, but I don't have a lot of faith in this friend spin-off. Um, you know, it's kind of, I think it'll be strange to see that. Okay, let's see. Uh, Aurelio, uh, you're welcome anytime. I would like to say that since I'm following your advice, I'm improving my teaching skills. Thanks, I'm so happy to hear that, Aurelio. Um, yeah, I've, I've put out some ideas and I hope other teachers enjoy it. I've got a lot more content that I want to make in the future to help other teachers out there. So I hope, I hope these new videos I'm planning, um, maybe uh, I hope you'll enjoy it or learn something from it. Come here in. Hi, I found your channel last week and I can't stop watching. I do have some advice to teach management behavior for classroom for substitute teachers in primary schools. Cheers. Um, Yes, that is actually one of the videos I still have to make for managing um, substitute teachers. That's a difficult one because in a very short time, you're supposed to take care of the class. I think my main piece of advice is to always have um, substitute activities. So additional activities that you can use in the class. The, the, the beautiful thing about being a substitute teacher is that you're not going to see those students for too many classes, right? So if you have a bunch of activities or games or resources like worksheets and you go into class, you, most likely you will have many classes that you will do it with. So you don't have to prepare too much. But you also have to establish authority very quickly because when you walk into class, make sure that the, that the students understand the rules and what you have to do with it. Especially if you have to take over another teacher's class and they want you to do something with the students, make sure that the students do that first. Um, but also um, have fun getting to know the students. You know, if you go in there and you see it as an opportunity to, you know, make some new friends with the students and to get to know them, they will maybe be excited to share something about themselves. Um, yeah, uh, but I think the main thing is just have enough games and resources when you walk into class. Uh, I used to, when I used, to, well, when I teach, I always have, you know, backup activities or worksheets that I can take along in case the students work too quickly that we can do that in class. Um, okay, so let's see. Sagittarius, I always want to join your live stream because it can give me a chance to listen the way you speak. Your live stream is really useful for English learners. Thank you so much, uh, Sagittarius. Actually, uh, 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 I'm working on a series just for English learners because in uh, I've, I've got a lot of videos I want to complete maybe before the summer vacation is done. So in maybe three weeks, I want to complete all these videos. After that, I've got almost a year, a year's worth of videos just about for English learners to talk about topics and about questions that I'll put out because I need some time to work on some more material. So hopefully in three months, um, there will be a lot more videos and content especially for English learners, Sagittarius, and I hope you enjoy it. Takara, I hope that helped. I, I, I know it wasn't exactly what you wanted to hear, but I'll also think about it in the future. Mr. Mario, hola, Eric. Hi, Mario. Hope you're doing well. Are your classes going okay? Luza, uh, try to see how much they know. Even they said they don't know anything. They will be surprised of their knowledge. Very nice. I like that. Um, you know, I, I think... As teachers, we should really try and help our students 
build their confidence. And how I like to do it is I like to ask my students, especially if they are lower level, I try to ask them easy, simple questions. And I, I try to support them with the answers so that even if they answer a simple question right. So I, I would ask, oh, how are you today? Uh, and then if they say, I'm doing well, I'm like, oh, that's great. And then I can ask them another simple question. So, uh, oh, um, what color is my shirt today? What color is it? And they're like, uh, uh, yeah, my, your shirt is, and then they say the word, and I'm like, excellent. So you ask and you build the students up, you build up their confidence, and um, they will be more likely and to, to participate in class. So I think it's very important to help students with that. Me, um, how to teach students writing and speaking style from their original style into English style. Thank you. I think it's great to have a lot of examples students can use. So if you have a book that you can work from and examples that they can see is you can see, OK, well, this is how a native speaker is writing. This is the sentence structure. This is the way that they uh, that they explain things in their writing or even with speaking. Obviously, you know, there are, there are so many examples of of um, people speaking that you can use and then the students should try and copy it and then also try and use their own answers using that structure because we have to tell our students that you know in order for you to master something you have to learn from someone else first so it's not just copying you are learning from that resource and then you're adding your own spin to it okay so you substitute different words and you learn from there um what is that um what is that expression again about uh about copying someone the, 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 uh, i'll think about it i'll think about it but they um it's it's very useful something about copying someone oh i'll think about it do joe uh how to teach s uh, okay so that's the european framework um well basically that is just all about the different levels that the students are you just check what level they are and then you use the appropriate resources for that and then you teach them for that so uh if we go cfr levels if and you can do test to see it so yeah you've got the six levels a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 and uh, according to what their level is you can help them and i think uh, when it comes to these levels, uh, you can also you should also test your students very often to make sure to see what levels they are. So they can also feel like I think what's good about these levels um, uh, is that the students can see where they are and they they are motivated to push to to reach the higher level. I know many students that say, "Oh, I'm stuck in B2." I would love to progress to C1. So that's kind of important if you know the differences between these and to motivate your students to reach those. Sonia, how to teach soft skills through English? Well, I think I think soft skills are great to learn through English because so soft skills are the life skills that learners can learn. You know, it could be with um, how to work in groups. It could be to be polite. It could be life skills like, cooking or or um oh well no i don't think cooking that's not a soft skill um but it's 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 many communication based um skills that the students learn and i mean as an english teacher for myself i want to teach students confidence when they are in conversations i want them to to learn presentation skills so i use english all the time when i teach them these skills and you can make it topics that you want to teach. So you can get vocabulary that you want them to go through and you can you can have additional uh, skills that you want to teach them. How to teach them? I think this comes to your own personal teaching style. You can use different activities. You can um, you can explain it to them. You can uh, have them um, have them do um, physical uh, presentation. So actually, you know, do do those soft skills in class in during role plays so yeah no soft skills are amazing and i think it is our duty as teachers to do these soft skills elsa how are you doing it's so nice to see you uh, i just want to say everyone thank you so much for joining 
you know, after my disappointment about making the videos, yes, I know, Letty, I have to get over it. Uh, after my disappointment of shooting those videos and having to redo them, um, I just want to say thank you for being here. You, um, you put a smile on my face, even though I'm still very disappointed, but I'll get them done and hopefully we'll, um, you'll have some good videos coming out soon. Uh, Seema, hi teacher, pleasure joining your live stream. Virtual hug. Thank you so much, uh, Seema. I appreciate it. Come, Erin. Uh, Eric, thank you for your answer. Your brilliant and amazing cheers from Ireland. Thank you so much. I hope it helped. Guys, if you have any questions, if uh, there are some videos you want to see in the future, you can ask me. I've got a bunch of videos on the list I still need to make and shoot. Uh, Zuzu or X Zuzu Maja, uh, hi. Uh, how do you come out of the situation where you run out of an idea in the middle of the lesson and you still have seven to 10 minutes left? I think I made a video a long time ago about what to do if you run out of things to do. Uh, let me quickly find that video. Um, I can remember some of the things I said, but you know what's great about these videos is I can script them and I can put down my ideas in a more rational way. So let me quickly find that. Uh, end of class. Let's see if it brings up. No, I'll just put up end. End. Give me a video. What to do when class ends early? Well, this is a very old video. I shot it two years ago. Uh, I'm going to leave the link in there. But guys, just remember, this is two years ago. Um, <laughs> oh, this is such a horrible thumbnail too. I feel so shy now sharing this. Okay, I'll share it with you. This is a video from two years ago. What to do when class ends early. And uh, just don't look at the thumbnail. It's very funny. There we go. I'm going to post it. And actually, in the description, I wrote down, okay, so five things you can do uh, when class ends early. So one, review. Ask students qu what they've learned today. You can also ask them to do uh, an exit ticket. An exit ticket is they have to write, wh what is it again? What they have learned, uh, what they think they will learn in the future, and how this can help them. Something like that. So you give them some questions where they have to answer what they've learned. Uh, second, you can summarize. You can ask students to summarize what they did in class. This is a great way for them also to, to structure progression, you know, what they did first, second, next, next. Uh, pair sharing, you ask them to write down a review or summary or sticky, uh, sticky points, things that, that, uh, that uh, are difficult, and they can do that with a partner, and they share that with a partner. Connections, uh, what connections are there between this lesson and the outside world? So what can they take from this lesson and use outside? And five, thank the students, thank them for doing a good job. Uh, you can also share an interesting story of your life or topic. I think as teachers, um, you know, most teachers, we get used to telling stories or sharing with the students, or at least we have to. So, uh, yeah, those are some, some things that you can do with the students. If you can't do that, um, check out, um, I've got so many games that you can play with students. Fun riddles are also useful. If you've got if you've got some riddles that you can use uh, and then you ask the students these riddles, they're really fun. Uh, I also, I like having a book. This book is called Wisdom for Winners. Wisdom for Winners, it's a fantastic book by Jim Stovall. I think he, um, so basically he wrote down all these short stories that are basically uh, uh, three to five minutes long with some wisdom for the students to learn from. And I, I found that those are amazing. So uh, wisdom for winners, that's a great thing to learn. For Keto, hi, my dear Eric. I'm so happy to spend this hour with you. Hello, everyone. Hi, for Keto. It's nice to have you. Um, uh, we just had some, uh, I think it's Oriello, also from Mexico, that joined us. Uh, Adnaf, hi. Uh, Mario, here's Mario. Let me read. Teacher Eric, at first I saw his explanation about the detective team. Half difficult, but then I analyzed, well, an only question of reasoning and investigation by the students. I love this because the students really get excited about finding out. So this game that Mario is talking about is one of the games I shared it in a short. Basically, um, you split the class, let's say, into three groups, and then you pick three random students. These students have to go outside. You tell them, okay, guys, there's been 
a murder or some kind of thing. There, there's been a murder, then they have to go outside and they have to construct uh, an alibi. What were they doing last night? Were they eating at a restaurant? What were they eating? What foods were they? So they talk about these things. They come up with a story. Then the rest of the groups, they think of questions they can ask for these students. Then the students come back into class and each group um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, interrogates these students, asks them questions. And then the students swap. And afterwards, they say they pick who they each group picks who they think is the best liar. So that's kind of fun. How to teach IELTS? Um, okay, well, IELTS, I, I don't think I've got uh, any advice for you. IELTS, that is specifically just for um, the test preparation. So you go through it with the books. There are a lot of books on it, and you just need to take the students through it. I think that's a little bit difficult. Um, maybe in the future, I will make a more a, a better video about it, but um, uh, no... Nozim John, uh, sorry, I don't have great ideas for you on I IELTS because uh, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, Takara, sir, please, how can we deal with naughty and introverted students? Takara, that's two different questions. Naughty students, you want to lay down the law, you want to put in structures and rules that they have to follow, and if they don't follow those rules, then they get punished. With um, introverted students, your goal is for them to open up. So you want to give them, um, uh, you want to build their confidence. You want them to get to speak. In my classes, I have a rule that no one is shy, so they have to speak. And to help shy students, you can perhaps um, support them by letting them write down some words or some sentences for them to speak. You can also let them do more things in groups where they work with a partner. The reason why I like to put students with pairs when they ask their friend questions is because uh, when a shy student talks about themselves, they feel like all the pressure is on them. But if I ask my shy student to talk about their partner, uh, oh, wh what is your partner's answer? What did they think? then they are more likely to talk because it's about their partner. So that's something I like to do. Okay. Um, thank you for the questions, Takara. I really appreciate it. Uh, Yulia, hi from Vladivostok. Oh, I love Vladivostok. I was in Vladivostok 10 years ago. Mm, it was a fantastic time and I would love to visit again. Um, Yulia, I'll send you, uh, I'll, I'll let everyone know if I go back. Um, I'm so sad because this summer everything is still closed and I had this hope of traveling to the Ukraine. There, there were some, some stories of the Ukraine being open for South Africans, but unfortunately I think they closed down. So I might just be stuck in South Korea for now. But when it opens up, I will definitely go and visit. Wednesday, March. Thank you. Well, it's nice to have you Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, and then Elixir School, can you share some useful resources and activities for primary school? Um, Elixir School, I have, um, so all the activities and resources, I actually have a playlist of, of um, activities that you can use in class. And then for these activities, I also have resources in there. If you join the uh, Etiquette, um list the the email list i send the first email i send you has a list of all the worksheets and resources that you can use so definitely check that out let me quickly find this teaching tips no no where is it uh no 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 oh where is that i uh oh, here we go english activities okay let me quickly uh no open Ah, let me pause here. Give me a second. Okay, this is the playlist for all the English activities that you can check out. Uh, let me just put it in there. So it's got all the uh, activities for different times, and also it has the resources. Uh, Luza, soft skills to me uh, uh, involve almost anything we do with students. I totally agree. We can notice which skills students need to work on and use in daily activities to work and improve them. Teamwork, adaptability, problem solving, leadership, work ethic, and time management. Thank you so much, Luza Ang, for giving these tips. I totally agree. And thank you for sharing all these soft skills. I, uh, I forgot about all these soft skills. So teamwork, adaptability, 
problem solving is great, leadership, work ethic, and time management, very important. I always like to count down for my students. Okay, you have two minutes left, get it done. Uh, Natalia, I heard about that in the chat box. I love this group so much. People there are so nice and open to chat. Uh, great practice for me. By the way, that is such a great serial out of time. I'm just so happy they did this. It shows their integrity and how much they really do love others and their fans. 100%. By the way, guys, if you are studying English, if you want to practice your English a little bit, please join the chat box group uh, on Facebook. Um, such a great community. Natalia, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the group there uh, with Katy and them, they have these live sessions where they chat and they're very inclusive. Uh, a great community to be a part of. And, and Natalia, I'm happy that you joined them. Rabia, hi, good to see you. Uh, where are we? Ping, uh, Zugo, uh, ask the students how many words they can count or remember from the lesson. Play mind web games like connect words with each other. The student who can remember the most words is the winner. Ping, such a good idea. I like that. Lucia, what are soft skills? Uh, I think um, Luza just answered that. I didn't do a great one. Uh, excellent tip about shy students. It's really deep inside. Why have I never thought about it? Uh, which one is that? The the putting them into pairs. Uh, Takara, thank you, teacher. Natalia, everything is returning to normal life here. Nice. I want to visit so badly. Our vacation, my vacation is going to start in a month. I don't have any plans except I know I need to do some videos that I have to make and I'm going to work on the channel. But I really want to travel and also enjoy my time. You know, I feel like I really feel like I, I need a break and I need to get away. And I'm sure many of you guys too, I, I think, uh, you know, we're all just waiting for things to get back to normal. So hopefully it does and we can enjoy life. Anjalina, hi teacher, love from India. Hi Anjalina, nice to have you. Okay, where are we? Uh, okay, uh, uh, wait for Keto. Next week, I have to teach prepositions. I don't know why, but it's a little difficult because in our idiom, they're so different from English. Please give a tip. I love prepositions. So prepositions are where things are. I always start class. I take a big chair and I put it in front of the students. And, you know, it's a quick review you make. You, you basically put the chair and then you put some a ball or something on top of the chair. Where is the ball? It's on the chair, under the chair, in front of the chair, next to it. You can say it's going over the chair. So these prepositions are great. And for keto, actually, um, a little bit of a head, um, a little bit of a, uh, I, during my summer activities video, I actually talked about a, a fun activity that you can play and it's called a scavenger hunt. So a scavenger hunt, usually you write down a list of things students have to look for. Now, in this case, you get the students to make the scavenger hunt. So you tell the students to take out a paper and then you tell them to walk around the class and then write down where some things are, okay? So you walk around class and they have to write down the book is, the, the teacher's book is on the desk or they write down, um, you know, there's something red on the wall or they, they have to write down a list and then you take it, so they have to write down 10, 10 things in class that they can see. Then you take them, you redistribute the papers to the students, and they have to walk around the class and find what their friend um, wrote down. Another activity, uh, so a really fun thing is a scavenger hunt that the students make themselves. Another idea is some kind of game where uh, the students, uh, you get a, a dice and you put the dice, you uh, put some papers on the dice where you write, on, in, under, behind, or something like that. So you pick that up and you throw it and students have to make a sentence using that. You can even make a game out of it. So you can write down all those prepositions and then you can write down objects, book, pencil, um, uh, chair, something like that. And then you throw one and the other one and the students have to go and touch something that is this, or they have to put something on there. So you've got, um, you throw on and you throw book, and the student has to run to their desk and they have to put their book on the chair or something like that. Um, just make it fun, let the students interact with it, give them plenty of examples. 
and also ask students to give you um, to give you examples of what they did. So afterwards, constantly repeat and refresh their memories. Uh, I hope that helped for keto. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you know there are so many resources and books about it, and I've seen a lot, but I can't think of anything else at the moment. Um, Alicia, please give advice and tips for teaching pre-intermediate level students for IELTS. Um, well, uh, Alicia, um, the IELTS. Um, yeah, so basically it's a lot of reading that they have to do and comprehension. I think that the best way to go through it is to get some of those practice books and then go through it with the students. Uh, make sure that they read the vocabulary, especially when they're when they're pre-intermediate, so they go through that vocabulary, let them read, to, uh, let, teach them some of the basic grammar that they have to understand. Also, I think because it's more leaning towards a test, you want them to uh, practice a lot of comprehension, so understanding what goes on in those stories. And the easiest way is to just go through it. The, the problem I have with IELTS is, you know, when you have to teach students like that, I, I, I prefer teaching communication, but I have had to prepare students specifically for tests. But when you prepare students for te tests, uh, the best way is just to go through those reading practice, reading practice. So asking them questions about the reading. It's a bit boring, but they, they will get the, the best results that way. Uh, where is this chat box group? Uh, Sagittarius, uh, I'll quickly find it for you. So on Facebook, I'll quickly go. Um, Okay, why is it so slow? Okay, chat box. So guys, uh, I'll ch share the chat box. Um, you can join them there. It's a fantastic group. Uh, let me just take the group, copy, and I'll share it with you. Where are we? Ah, here we go. So this is the chat box group, fantastic group. You can join their live streams and chat with them. Uh, Yulia, uh, thanks, Eric. So happy to find your channel. I've learned a lot. What do you think of... Uh, Miro whiteboard? Do you ever use it? Miro whiteboard? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Is that like an electronic board, a whiteboard? Um, I think, you know, whatever tool you use, uh, you know, whatever you can do to explain to the students and to to um, to show them what you think uh, that can be used. Um, uh, right now, I teach on Zoom and in class at the same time, and I use the Zoom whiteboard. I've also used electronic boards in the past. I've used the blackboard although my writing skills aren't that great. Um, yeah, every teacher needs to, because so many activities we can use the whiteboards for, we can use it when we explain grammar, we can write things down. I mean, whiteboards will never go away. I'm not sure what the mirror whiteboard is though. So uh, sorry, I can't help you with that, Yulia. Luza, to teach in and on, I usually teach the two prepositions, comparing them like a book on the chair. I can put the book in the chair and uh, do the mimic of opening the chair to put the book inside the chair. I like that. So I, I think comparison so that the students can use that too. I think very good idea, Luzang. Um, uh, Alicia, thank you for your answer. I hope it helped. Uh, Sagittarius, thank you. Jennifer, thank you. Mario, my students are Hispanics and Brazilian origin, which is why I teach English, because they do not understand the global language. Mario, thanks to your teaching, you know, you're going to open up the world for these students. And I'm sure that you'll do a great job and they'll be very thankful for you. OK, guys, does anybody have a question? Is everybody happy? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, this week, what will I have to do this week? Uh, this week, well, first I need to reshoot that video. If I've got energy, I'll do it now. Maybe I'll do, I'll redo those two videos now. And tomorrow I want to shoot, shoot three videos. So this Tuesday, I'll bring out the video about friends next. And then next week, uh, next week, Tuesday, I've got two big videos. I want to bring out summer activities. And then also, I've made, I've found 20 websites for English teachers, 20 great free websites for English teachers. I think that'll be a great video because I share some of the resources and games, um, some of the websites that you can use. I think it, I found it really useful, especially if you need worksheets and resources to you. So I'll put that out, but that might only come out in three weeks. Uh, then I'm doing two extra videos on questions from 
um, viewers. So if you have any questions and you want me to make a video on it, please ask. Uh, I'm busy with the script for total physical response, 10 activities for TPR. That will probably come out also in a month or so. And then there are three videos that really bother me. The reason they bother me is that I think it's very important to, to do them. But I want to write the scripts out and I want to think about them. I want to make them as good as possible. The one is how to teach English. So this is a basic, um, uh, it's, a, it's a basic video to help teachers that are starting to teach English as a second language. I really want to make that video um, uh, for, for, for that. And then the other two videos I've spoken about before, the one is how to teach young learners. So that is very important to me. I will share some activities and how to teach young learners. And then how to teach phonics. Uh, that's also for young learners, the process of teaching phonics. I guess in the future, especially uh, for uh, Alicia, I need to do some videos on IELTS, but I don't think so. I think right now I just want to finish these couple of videos and those videos, uh, those four videos. And if I complete that, I will be at peace. I will be very happy. Uh, because I know that's what you guys want. And I'm so sorry if it if it's taken so long. You know, I've made many videos in the past, but I always, uh, I'm, 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 I feel bad that I haven't touched these subjects before. So yeah, I hope you guys are, um, you're patient and you don't mind waiting too long as I bring these out. Uh, Nezreen, perfect. Mario says, thank Eric. Please, ideas on topics for adult students in reading, translating, and comprehension. Ah, oh, loser. Um, uh, for adults. Yeah, uh, for adults, I think I've said it before. I basically said, you know, you want to base it on the, the students' experiences. Comprehension, um, I think I've in the video I'm going to make about websites, there are so many news websites that you can use for comprehension, uh, for translating, uh, for reading. I think there are lots of news websites or, um, uh, and also, you know, um, yeah, things that are happening in the country, things, topics that are relevant for them. You know, I, I think the, the beauty of adults is that they already understand the world. And now it's just about taking that understanding that they have in one language and now starting to practice it in other words. So try and find content that you think might be useful to your students. Uh, uh, you know, just search the internet. Fortunately, it's out there for us. Uh, the easiest way is also just find a, a book. You know, uh, they've got lots of ESL books out there that cover different topics and go through it with our students. Uh, uh, you know, reading and comprehension, that's that's just all on the students. Um, you just need the resources for that. That's very easy to teach. I think when it comes to teaching English, you know, um, I, I think that the most stressful thing for me anyway, I think it might be different for other teachers out there, is teaching younger students because you want to do all these activities with them, you want to play with them, and you have to keep, keep them under control. Um, but when it comes to you know, adults, you know, you don't have to worry about keeping them active and playing games with them and, you know, with discipline, that's all taken care of. And the world is filled with resources. So we're very fortunate to teach them. Um, uh, maybe in the future, I'll, we'll make some more about that. But I do have, you know, I do have a lot of videos on activities that you can do with the class, especially, you know, that the, the, the different uh, uh, the 52 activities I told you about before, uh, that's really good. Um, Luciana, I have a student in the hospital with COVID. It's quite sad. Yes, it's it's really difficult for that student. I hope you sent them a message and uh, I'm, I'm sure they will, will recover, especially if they're younger. But, you know, I think it's more that, you know, when it comes to COVID, it's more the idea of it that and uh, for, for younger students that, you know, are oh, they've got this, the sickness, but you know, in most cases, they're going to recover and you know, just make sure that they're welcome to come back to class. Also, perhaps you can send them some of the activities, some of the things in class, or record, uh, record a message from everyone in class. Everyone say hello to the friend, you know, and they can cheer. And I like that idea so that the student knows that you're thinking about them. 
but yeah, I hope they recover sh soon, uh, Luciana. Um, Saima! Hi, everyone. Hi, Eric. Saima, I am great because you guys are here, but I'm a little bit upset at myself because I have to redo some videos. Oh, so disappointing. I thought, okay, I shot the videos. I can rest well, and tomorrow I can just do the editing and put it out Tuesday, but now I've got to redo everything. Um, Luza Ang uh, says, thanks. And Zuzu, Eric, how do you deal with the school that insists your pronunciation is not correct, even after showing them the correct one with videos? They insist it isn't correct. Thanks again. Well, that's difficult. You know, um, here's what I would do. Just, just tell them, okay, I will try and fix my pronunciation to how you want it to be, and then continue with the way you teach class. Every time they bring it up, it's like, oh, you're, you're mispronouncing words, or your pronunciation isn't, uh, isn't correct. You're like, oh, okay, sorry, I'll work on it, and then try whatever they're saying, and then just do whatever you're comfortable with, you know? Um, but if they are completely wrong, and if you insist on doing it that way, um, and they still don't. Uh, in, they still insist it's not correct, man. Uh, then you're not gonna. You're not gonna change their. Even with facts, if you show them uh, examples of the right ones with video, then they are just ignorant and then ignore them because you know you're never going to convince someone if they if they're that pressed. Um, I think that that is one of the things we've got to learn is that there are some battles that you can win and then there are some battles that you just avoid because it's dumb, you know? So that's something, um, I think that's something in teaching that we have to remember, just avoid the dumb ones, you know? Um, so Mario, uh, my effort is the most, but I do, some students do not cooperate, but most do. Okay. Um, uh, Mario, if most do, that is great, you know, as long as the majority of them do it. And, you know, in some points, if you continue doing what you're doing as a teacher and the other and the students that don't cooperate can see the effect you're having on their friends, maybe at some point they'll change, you know, just be open into inviting them. So, you know, don't if they don't cooperate, you know, don't say sit over there. You're not going to do anything with us. So, OK, sit over there. But if you feel like joining in at any time, feel free, you know, Um uh, that is if you can convince them. You know, uh, I think the other thing as a teacher is it's a balancing act. Sometimes you've got to force them to do something. Sometimes you've got to just lead them to the water and allow them to drink um, by themselves. Saima, I have a question. What does a good lesson plan look like? Okay, a good lesson plan. That's a great question, Saima. Um, huh. A good lesson plan has everything you need. So uh, you'll uh, write down what the objective is of the lesson, uh, what you want the students to achieve. Uh, you're going to have uh, a couple of points on how you're going to introduce the topic, how you're going to start. You're going to, um, exp um, uh, and then you're going to have some activities. You're going to write down the resources. And so you're going to write down step by step what you're going to do in class in order for the students to achieve uh, that goal that you've set for them. And then you're going to want to find a way to, uh, to, to actually assess the students whether they've achieved that goal. What I would also add at the end of the lesson plan is a reflection. Uh, what went well with the class? What do you think you can improve? And what can you add in the future? So, Saima, yeah, I think most lesson plans, you know, uh, we get too stressed about it, what, everything we need. But just remember, have your objective, um, have the activities that you're going to do, the resources, how you're going to teach it to the students, uh, have a way that you can assess whether they've achieved it or not, and then also use it as a reflective uh, practice. I, I hope that answers your question. Mohamed, hello. Luza Ang, yes, it reminds me of the time I was told that I need to change my accent because it is British. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. A lot of people talk about it. Like I've said before, as long as you're clear, that's all that's important. Um, you know, for me, some, some, someone also said, Eric, you lost your British accent. And I said, yes, I know it's kind of strange. I wish I could get it back. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, don't worry too much about the pronunciation. Uh, Saima, yes, I notice you are not making videos. I'll start watching them once I have a summer break. Yes, Saima, actually, yeah, I've been um, writing scripts 
every Tuesday I bring out a new video, as you know. And I've got some big ones that I'm finished with. Like I said before, first the, the, the friends one will come out. Then the summer activities one I think will be popular. I'm going to do the TP, uh, oh, the 20 websites for teachers. Then I'm going to do the TPR one. I also want to do one for Teacher's Day. I also need to do one for Father's Day. Independence Day, maybe I'll see about that. Because, uh, you know, well, maybe we'll see. Uh, and then all those teacher ones that I that I spend a lot of time working on the scripts. Yeah, I've got a lot of ideas. It just takes time and energy to make them. And if I make mistakes like I did today, it's going to take even longer. But thank you guys for being so patient and waiting for me. Uh, Mario, that's right, Eric. Top tip. Um, Sedar, I'm not sure if you are a native English speaker, but I was wondering if you sometimes use L1 in your classes with your students uh, if they do not get what you want to say. Yes, actually, I did a, a video about it earlier. I definitely use some L1 in the classroom with my students. If I want to explain something very quickly, uh, if it's instructions for younger learners, I can just quickly use L1 with that. Or if it's something funny, um, I also, you know, um, sometimes in class, I will just ask my students, oh, what is what is this again in, in Korean? You know, and that way the students, uh, they learn new things too, or their friends also pick something up. So, yeah, I definitely use L1. But remember, you don't want to use it too much. And specifically, you don't want your students to use it too much. Um, I'm actually, I'm very lenient when it comes to using L1 in my class for my students too, as long as they know that they have to perform. Um, so whenever I do some group activities or something, maybe they'll use some L1, but when they have to perform and practice, they definitely use English. So um, when they're communicating with each other, it's it's for them, it's easy to, to use Korean, but very important to use English when I want them to practice. Okay. Um, yeah, everyone, did you have a nice day today? Um, I know I came in this and I, I was a, I was a little bit um, upset, but it's only at myself and you guys, you asked some great questions and you really picked up my mood. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. And also, uh, thank you for being patient with the videos that I bring out. Every Tuesday, I'll bring out some videos. Uh, and maybe I think in the future, I will do some interviews again on the live stream. I think it's been a while. You guys are probably getting bored of me just uh, talking the whole time. So I might invite another teacher or someone to chat to. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, uh, here we go. Oh, this Seda, uh, do you ignore when they ask you something for clarification in L1? Um, if they ask me something about that, I might say, um, da, 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 da. Um, so uh, if they ask me something, let's say they ask me something and they ask me in L1, I will still answer in English so that they know that that's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clarification. Maybe I will use it. It depends how useful it. If I can explain it to them in English, I will. But if it's faster just to do that, I'll use L1. But remember, just tell them, listen, guys, this is English class. I want you to use as much English as possible. So it's very important to say that. Luzang, I mentioned before that I use synonyms of that new word in English first. Surely they know that. That's a good idea. Thank you, Luza. So maybe you can use synonyms instead of using that. Uh, Oriello, uh, or why am I struggling? Oriello, Oriello. Uh, thanks, Eric. For Quito, thank you uh, so much for sharing your ideas, my dear Eric. So helpful. Have a nice week, everyone. I send you strong luck. Thank you so much for Quito. Uh, Yajaira, thanks a lot, Professor. It's nice. Yeah, uh, Yajaira, it's always a pleasure having you. Uh, wish you the best, you too, everyone. Have a great time. Oh, and here's Martin. Um, everyone. Have a great week, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Okay, everyone, have a nice day. Bye-bye.